What's up, guys? I want to share some Pokemon and some builds that will hopefully push you towards your rank goal desire if it's master rank or 1600 points in master. Hopefully, these Pokemon will get you easily there and you're going to have a good time climbing in these last few days of the season. So, now first off, you have Confusion Barrier Mr. Mime. This build is probably one of the most difficult ones on this list, but if you can play it and if you get used to it, it's very, very strong. We combine it with Triple Glasses, it just has very good early game. Like, you pretty much after level 4 and after level 6, you will get every single last hit on the lane. And you do so much damage. If your jungler ever ganks your lane or be another strong lane partner with you, you're just going to be rolling over your lane and making this en the enemy team have a miserable time. Not as easy to play as power swap, but still very strong. And for the better item, X Speed or Full Heal. Full Heal is just kind of necessary right now because of Sableye, but you can kind of get away playing X Speed on this Pokemon as well. And for emblems, we just play full special attack. If you don't have good full special attack emblems, you can also go black one or black green, or you go green and white. Those are all totally fine options for your emblems. Next up, we have no, no surprise Sableye, which is also, again, you can buy it with coins now. So it's such an OP Pokemon. And with the Shadow Sneak and Confuse Ray build, I currently run Muscle Bend, Attack Bit, and Floatstone. It has great laning phase, great mid game, great late game. It just stuns Pokemon so much. And you, you just make the enemy team frustrated as well. You make them so frustrated, they're going to play differently. For Eject Button, we go, I have a better item, we go Eject Button, because we can also combine it with our Unite move. Or just Eject Button onto someone into, you know, a boost auto attack that hears them. It does quite a lot. And for um, emblems, I'm currently running 6 brown with HP. But you can also go 7 yellow emblems. That's also totally fine. Then the next laner, we have Azumarill, which I think is still one of my favorite laners, just because it has very good early game. We play Aqua Tail and Water Pulse currently. I like this build the most. I think it's the best one. Combining it with a Scope Lens, Attack Weight. And for last item, it can be pretty much anything. It can be a Cookie. It can be an Energy Amplifier. It can be a Focus Band, a Muscle Band, a Float Zone, whatever you prefer. I kind of like the Float Zone and the Aeos Cookie right now. All of these items are totally fine. Weakness policy as well. All of these items work great on Azumarill, and you can kind of just decide on whatever you feel like, uh, you know, you like the most. And for better item, I currently recommend Full Heal. X Speed is better, but Full Heal right now against Sableye. Um, we just also, all of these builds are kind of try to be good against Sableye. So this is quite good against it. Just allows you to get out of it. And for emblems, we run 6 brown and HP emblems otherwise. So next up, for this Pokemon can go lane and in jungle. So it's very flexible. If you just play Venus, you're going to have a good time. It's also pretty good again into Sableye because you can kind of hear when you hit Sableye when he's invisible. So you can kind of chase him down a bit with Petted Dance. Since again, you hear the sound after level 13, you have such a huge area. You can kind of keep, you know, Sableye in your Petted Dance for kind of a long time and hopefully reveal him again. So we run Muscle Band, Focus Band, and Energy Amplifier. Again, I can go into lane or into jungle. Jungle is obviously always better, but I can totally lane as well. And always full heal. Always want to run full heal. If you get stunned and don't get our Giga Drain out, we die. So yeah, Muscle Focus Energy Amplifier. I like, like the en en Energy Amplifier. It does a lot of damage. Conduction also helps us a lot. If we have this and Blue Buff and Black Emblems, which we run, we run 7 Black and 6 Green Emblems, we pretty much have Petted Dance up permanently late game. If you have Blue Buff, it's going to be always up, and you just press Petted Dance on cooldown whenever it's up, and you just run on, around the map very fast as well. So it's quite, quite nice. The next up, we have Charizard, another Pokemon that can go in two lane and jungle. Obviously, I would recommend playing it in jungle for sure, uh, just because, you know, jungling is uh, much easier to get your level 9 with. It can lane, can be a bit more difficult. There are certain lanes where you will have a hard time and you might struggle a bit. So we play um, the Flame Thrower with Flare Blitz build. You can also go Fire Blast. Fire Blast is good if the enemies have a lot of range abilities. Flare Blitz is great if you just want to utilize the shield and have a stun. It's pretty good into Sableye as well, I would say. The Flare Blitz helps you quite a lot to catch up to him. And yeah, in general, Flare Blitz is quite decent just for the shield. Point and click stun, it will allow you to hit your flamethrower as well onto targets. But it also stuns them, so they can't maybe use an unstoppable thing. So you stun them, instantly unite move, so they can't unstoppable anything. And you can be quite happy. Head items, Muscle Band, and Scope Lens. Last one can be pretty much anything again. Can be Float Stone, a Focus Band, can be energy, actually Energy Amplifier, I don't like. Can be Weakness Policy. In Attack Weight, a Razor Claw can be any of those items. All of them are totally fine. I think Focus Band is the safest one, but you can totally go any of the other damage items as well. And for better item, always full heal. Again, Sableye, you have to run full heal. I'm just going to keep saying that the entire time. And for emblems, we run 6 brown, all focus on crit. So as many crit emblems as you have, and afterwards as well. So 6 brown with as many crit, and then the other 4 also just crit emblems if you can find. If you don't have crit emblems, you can also go that attack or HP emblems. Up next we have Dralodon. Another Pokemon that can be also played in lane, 
Or in, I mean, it's always better in jungle as well again, but you can also play it in lane. You just need to get to level 5, and he does have quite good early game. We run Dragon Pulse always with Dragon Tail. I would always recommend this combination right now. Flash Cannon is just a bit too slow. Can be difficult getting around the map, so yeah. And Dragon Tail just gives you mobility. Stealth Rock, you're just a bit too much of a sitting duck. So yeah, we for sure want Dragon Tail to get around the map, or like, no, to just have mobility in teamfights. Because again, we have to run fully on this Pokemon as well. First, because of Sableye. Second, because our Unite move will get cancelled a lot of times if we don't have it. So we always kind of want to press full heal into our Unite move to make sure it doesn't get cancelled, right? And for eight items, Muscle Band, Scope Lens, and Floatstone. You can also run Focus Band if you don't have Floatstone. Totally fine as well. I just, or Razor Claw, but I like the Floatstone to get around the map faster. And for Emblems, we also just run the same as Charizard. Full on crit if you have. Actually, no, we don't. Sorry, my bad. We run three red Emblems, and then we run brown <laughs> Emblems with as much crit as you can find. That is the bit. Because this Pokemon is one of the rare ones that actually emblems are good on. Also need three red emblems, more you don't need. Those three red emblems are enough to hit, you know, a next power spike in his attack speed calculations. Then we have something that I think people just underestimate a lot, which is still Ice Even Glaceon. An absolutely amazing build. This Pokemon is super, super good and an absolutely menace to play against. Um, yeah, this Pokemon is broken. Still, it does so much damage, very good early game. Only problem is that if you want to get full value out of Glaceon Icy Wind, you have to have a level 30 Shell Bell and a level 30 Energy Amplifier, seven Black Emblems, and potentially even a Mewtwo Emblem, just to make sure you always have your Icy Wind up. And you also need Blue Buff. So it does have some requirements, but if you have those requirements, this Pokemon is still amazing. Battle Item, again, full here because of Sableye, otherwise the Eject Button I would recommend. Because you cannot jump forward, you might want to Eject Button back, that's why I don't like XP too much. We have full here or eject button, and again, emblems. We want to run seven black, six green, and maybe a scythe or something, so we even have more crit rate because Ice Even can crit. That's why we have the scope lens as well. And for the last one, which is kind of questionable, um, is Tyranitar. This Pokemon is absolutely insane. You can play it either with Ancient Power or with Centum. Both abilities are amazing, and this Pokemon is probably the best lagging Pokemon in the game still. As long as you get to level 13 or 14, you're going to just be having the easiest time of your life. It's also very good into Sableye, pretty much can't die to it. Um, you're always going to hit him as well when he's maybe invisible, so it makes it easy to play into Sableye for late game. Um, so as, as well, we want to run either full heal or an X speed. Full heal just because of Sableye, otherwise X speed is also totally fine. Muscle Band, Scope Lens, and Focus Band are my items that I currently like the most. You can also play something like Weakness Policy or Floatstone. As well, Floatstone I like an Ancient Power, and Sand Tomb I prefer Focus Band or a Weakness Policy. Both totally fine items. Muscle Band, Scope Lens just because you auto attack a lot still. And, you know, his auto attack crits actually hurt quite a lot. That's it for the jungle and laners. Actually, let me also recommend one, maybe, or one or two pre-made Pokemons, right? Because pre-mating is also still a thing. And my favorite pre-made Pokemon probably right now is Eldegoss. Eldegoss is super, super strong of a Pokemon. I'm very under- and I don't think it's underrated anymore. I see it a lot now. Pollen Puff build with Cotton Guard. You can also go Leaf Tornado. But Point Puff and Cotton Guard is very, very strong. I personally like Muscle Band a lot. And then there's a lot of different things you can do. You can go for more special tech, like this. Um, if you want to be a bit more defensive, you can also go something like Energy Amp and Focus Band or something. But special tech is quite good with uh, these two abilities, because they do scale a lot with it, since they're also AoE. So if you have more special tech, it's just if you hit three or four targets of your teammates in team fights, it's going to do quite a lot. So something like this, it's, it's looking very aggressive and very offensive, but it's quite, quite good. And you have a lot of defensive tools. You have a lot of healing, you have a permanent shield, um, so you get away with probably going a lot of offensive items, and then we either run X speed, X attack, or full heal. Full heal again, I'm just going to keep saying it throughout the entire video, because Sableye. And for emblems, I would recommend black and green. And I think I forgot uh, Tyranitar emblems. Tyranitar emblems also, 6 brown, and HP or crit if you can find. If you want to be more tanky, HP. If you want to do more damage, you can go 6 brown and crit. But otherwise, six brown. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I wish you best of luck in climbing until the new season.